Hello, and welcome to part three of our lessons on rational functions and analyzing them. We have looked at um, basically graphs and what these characteristics called vertical asymptotes and zeros and horizontal asymptotes look like on a graph, just as an overview. And then in part two, we looked at calculating domain vertical asymptotes, zeros, and holes, and that was all from a process of finding the zeros at the top and the zeros at the bottom, and then looking at those lists to determine which of those things give us our answers for those characteristics. Now, in part three here, we're going to look at horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are what the function does at the left end. It's the end behavior of a rational function, and this doesn't happen with polynomials. With polynomials, your end behavior always goes either, oops, sorry, I'm going to pick up a pen here, either goes up or down. It either goes off to positive infinity or to negative infinity. So when you have a, a polynomial, we had things like, oh, rises to the left, falls to the right, or, or rises right, left, and rises right. We describe end behavior that way. Well, rational functions can behave with ends like that too. You still have those same four choices, but a rational function can actually also kind of level off to some value, some some level y equals some number. And sometimes that number is zero, and sometimes that number is a different number, and sometimes your polynomial does end behave your rational function does end behavior like a polynomial. It doesn't have what we call this leveling off or this horizontal asymptote. So a horizontal asymptote looks way out at the left and right ends and says, you know, if you're changing x as you're way out that left and right end and making it even larger negative or larger positive, if y isn't changing much, and y is always the same number, essentially, or it's approximately the same number every time, then y equals that number is your horizontal asymptote. But if in the cases where you, you keep rising and falling, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger, then, then you don't have a horizontal asymptote. There's only three choices. Really, there's only two choices. Y equals a number, and a subset of that choice is Y equals zero is a special case. Or there isn't a horizontal asymptote. So the three choices come down to this. They come down to Y equals a number, Y equals zero, Y equals zero is the first choice. Y equals some other number, or you don't have a horizontal asymptote. And those aren't in any particular order. Um, so... Here are the th way you can tell the three choices. You just simply look at the degree of the top polynomial and look at the degree of the bottom polynomial and you make a comparison. And that comparison tells you which of these three categories you're in. So if the degree of the top polynomial is larger, that means there's no horizontal asymptote. So you just look at the, the degree, which is the leading term. So if you had an x to the fifth over 3x to the 4th, for instance, you would have no horizontal asymptote. Now, if the degree of the top polynomial and the bottom polynomial are the same, let's make that an x to the 4th over 3x to the 4th. You write down the ratio and you reduce it. If I reduce this fraction, I get 1 third. I don't get 3. Remember, there's an understood 1 here. When you reduce the x to the 4ths, you have to leave the 1 and the 3. Turns out this ratio, y equals one third, would be your horizontal asymptote. And I have the x to the fourth here. There could be other things after it, like plus x squared, minus x, minus x plus 10. Doesn't matter. We're just looking at the leading term with that leading coefficient and the term that contains the degree, making a ratio of that at the top and the bottom. So if the degrees are the same, so, you know, if the degree at the top is bigger, you don't have a horizontal asymptote. If the degrees are the same, write the leading term of the top, write the leading term of the bottom, and reduce that fraction, and that gives you your equation, y equals a number, is your horizontal asymptote. Now, there's only when you're comparing two numbers, there's only three possible outcomes. The top one is bigger, the numbers are the same, or the third one is the bottom one is bigger. So if I had 3x to the fourth divided by x to the fifth instead, in it actually doesn't matter. There could be other things, an x cubed term, an x squared term. There could be an x, it could be other terms here and other terms here. You were just looking at the term with the highest power, the, the leading coefficient term. Okay, the term we called the leading term, which has a, a coefficient in front of it. Now, 
this case, the degree at the bottom is higher than the degree at the top. And as x gets really, really big, either negative or positive, this x to the fifth becomes way, way bigger than the x to the fourth. So you get approximately 3 over x. And the 3 doesn't actually even matter. But as x gets big, 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 3 over x gets small, 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 small. So 3 over x goes to 0. So in this case, in case 3, y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. So here's the example we were working with earlier in the earlier um, videos look like this. So for horizontal asymptotes, all I care about is x squared over 3x squared. That's all I care about for horizontal asymptotes. And look, the degrees are the same. This reduces to, this is almost the example I used, one-third. That will be my horizontal asymptote for this example, y equals one-third. A horizontal asymptote is, a, is an equation of a horizontal line. So the proper way to write it is as the equation of a horizontal line, which is y equals one-third. It's not just the number one-third. So I did that for the example we had ongoing in the prior video here. And here's a graph of that function we've been working with. And as you see, as x goes to infinity, this is getting closer and closer to the x-axis. And as x goes to negative infinity, it crossed, this graph crossed the x-axis. And we found out where it crossed the x-axis. It crossed the x-axis where the zeros are. And let's go back to where we calculated the zeros. We had a 0 at x equals negative 2. And it was only at x equals negative 2 because negative 3 is also a 0 at the bottom. So when we go to our graph here, we can see, whoops, we can't see anything until I find that again, can we? Give me one moment, please. There we are. Sorry. I got, two, I got a mouse going in two directions here, and I confused it. Um, all right. So there we are. There's our graph. And we can see... At about x equals negative 2, it's a little tough, right there. We crossed and, and went from negative to positive, but that's okay. So we go along here, it starts kind of coming back down. It doesn't cross again because we didn't find any other zeros, but as x goes to negative infinity, you can see this y value is becoming approximately, and that's what that squiggly, approximately 0. And as x goes to infinity, y is becoming approximately 0 on this side too. And that's because the degree of the top was the same as the degree of the bottom. And also, here's our vertical asymptote at x equals 3. And there is no vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3, but notice this graph does not show you we had a hole there. You're not going to see that on a graph with technology. It's not The points are so small, you can't see that they didn't graph one at negative 3. So you have to know that by analysis. Okay, so horizontal asymptotes, you're going to look at the three cases. You're going to look at the degree of the top compared to the degree of the bottom. If the top is bigger, this reduces to, as x is really, really, really big, you only care about the highest power. So this really reduces to about x, x over 3. Or really, it's about x, because a gazillion divided by 3 is still kind of like a gazillion. I made that number up. Math teachers probably shouldn't do that. Anyway, and what happens, if you think of the graph of y equals x, you have n behavior. y equals x, the right goes up, the left goes down. So your function becomes like y equals x if x is really huge. Here, your function becomes, here the degrees are the same. So your function becomes the ratio of the two leading coefficients. If I had had um, another function, x, you know, 6x to the 7th over 4x to the 7th, my function would have become about equal to 6 fourths or 3 halves. It's, it becomes the ratio of the leading coefficient. So, and then... Uh, when the bottom is bigger, you reduce that and you get this x. Well, when you divide by a huge, remember, x is a huge number when you're talking about horizontal asymptotes. You're talking about when x is an enormous number. If I had three pizzas and I divided them into three million pieces, you wouldn't bother taking your share because it would be too small. So 3 over x goes to 0 as x is huge. So those are your three cases. Keep those notes in front of you and keep them in mind as you're doing your homework and email me any questions you have.
and slant asymptotes are also in these notes. We're not going to do those, but if you look at the bottom of the notes, there are um, some examples of that. And here's a visual of a rational function that has a slant asymptote. The slant asymptote would basically be the line that the end behavior follows. The end behavior does go down to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity and y goes to positive infinity, but it, it follows this line, and they call that a slant asymptote. I'm not going to hold you responsible for that, though, but just in case you were curious. All right, that's it for today's lesson, today's video, and email me your questions. Thank you.